Welcome to the Opus Projector Tool Training. In this video, I want to show you the peak line simulation, the variable simulation, and the usage of CAN with the simulation. So let's get started. I have prepared a little uh, test project with two linear bar graphs. One is used as an input, the other one is just uh, for display. This one is connected with the variable test1 this one with test2. I also have two soft keys on the left side, no function, um, just connected to variable test3 and test4. On the right side I have a link to a second page. There's really nothing much on that, it's just to show uh, the navigation. Um, so let's take a look at the peak line simulation. When you first create a, a project, you might have to check this checkbox up here. Once you did, you can just start the P-Client simulation. The P-Client is really a very close program to the one running on the device, only that it is built for Windows instead of Linux on the, on the Opus device. And of course, some of the core um, hardware functionalities such as uh, controlling the backlight intensity or beeper, multicolor LED, things like that, this is not implemented. But anything on a, a, a concerning navigation or internal, uh, uh, no, your own variables, all that will work. Okay, so what can you do? First of all, a mouse click equals a touch. So here we have a button that doesn't really do anything, but I can click and it uh, it's it's the same as if I touched the uh, touch screen on the Opus device. Same here with the soft keys. You can see when I click the button, um, I can edit objects the same way with the uh, like on the Opus device, and I can use the mouse wheel. I don't know if you can hear it. I'm I'm scrolling uh, with the mouse wheel. I can control the value of this object. Um, yes, the soft keys can also be controlled by the uh, function keys. So I'm pressing F1, F2, F1, F2, F1. So F1, 2, F8 for the A3 or F12 for the A6 can be used uh, to directly control the soft keys. And these keys also work. I can show you here I'm going to the page 2. There is nothing on here, so I cannot go back, but I can click on the home key and I'm back. And I should also be able to go back this way with the back key. So that's the basic peak line simulation for you. Now let, let's extend this with the variable simulation. With the variable simulation I can uh, monitor and also control um, all variables in the project. So let's take this variable for example. I think it was test2, but let's see. So here we have, I'm just, I just filtered, I wrote test up here, and it shows me all four test variables. So when I click here, it shows that the test3 variable goes to 1 when I press the button, and same with test4. And when I change this variable, you can see right here that I can see the value change in the um, variable simulation. Now let's use uh, this linear bar graph down here. Um, if I want to uh, control a variable with the variable simulation, I have to check this box, override owner's value. This is a safety precaution, not really um, so useful or so much needed uh, if the P-Client runs on the PC but it is also possible to connect to a P-Client um, via Ethernet on the device, and then it can be a big safety issue to change some variables while the device is running in the, in the vehicle. Okay, um, so now we have control over this variable, and we can set it with this uh, slider, or I think, yes, with these buttons as well. You can see the value is changing, and you can also see in the bottom the uh, linear bar graph is moving accordingly. So if I put in 100, it goes to the maximum. 
the slider here um, goes all the way to min and maximum of the variable. So for only small changes, it is a little bit difficult because one little movement is already a couple of hundreds. So this is only useful if the variable has a, a little bit of a smaller uh, range or, of course, if you want to see how does it behave when uh, in, in minimum and maximum. Okay, so these are the manual uh, value changes. There are also automatic value changes. We have value range. Um, let's say we go from 50 to 100. In steps of 1, we increment every 500 milliseconds. We want to repeat and we want to go, when it is at 100, we want to go back to 50. So we don't, don't want to go from 50, uh, from 100 straight to 50, we want to go all the way down. Now let's play this. Okay, this is a little bit of a bug because it's not using the starting point. So let's zero this. Let's see if it works better then. Oh no. Okay, so we haven't seen that and now we will start because now we are in the region. This is something I have to tell my colleagues. Okay, so now you can see the value is moving. I can still speed this up a little bit to show you how it behaves at the end. So we're getting to 100 and then we're getting back down to uh, 50. So this is a very nice way to uh, simulate some behavior in your system um, or maybe to show customers how things are moving, you know, move some needles, things like that. Um, what else we have? We have value switch. Well, it switches between exactly two values. We have value list where I can set up um, um, at different different fixed values and it will stay at those values for so and so many milliseconds. So this is for very special testing uh, situations. And we have random. Let's see how this works. Well, it works, it seems. So these numbers look pretty random. So this is, might also be something for testing to see how does your project behave um, with any kind of, of uh, value of certain variables. Okay, um, all these setups can be saved, save settings as, and then they can be loaded. I think I can also save them as default, so they will be loaded um, as default uh, when the variable simulation is started. Um, so you can really build yourself a, a, a big uh, testing simulation center with this with this variable simulation. Okay, I don't want to save now. Okay, and now step three. Um, with the use of a pecan dongle, I have to set this up here. Um, I can also check or test the uh, CAN bus in my project or the, 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 the CAN messages that I have set up. Let's take a quick look. I have uh, two messages, one receive with the variable test1 on ID 123 and one transmit on ID 124 sending every 100 milliseconds plus on any variable change with test2 and I can also include test3 and test4. Why not? Okay, so let's save this. We don't need the variable simulation now. We can see everything on the screen. Okay, now when we start the peak line simulation, um, you will see a big warning. Um, which is also, again, not really for the simulation on the PC, but more if it runs on the device connected with the PC via Ethernet. And um, in the end, you can make uh, very bad choices with variables and it can be careful. So you have, to, you have to be careful here and you have to agree that this is on your conscience now. So we agree, of course, and we proceed and we run our... Client. Let's put it up here and I have already prepared a PCAN view program and as you can see up here 
we already have the um, the message 124 coming in every 100 milliseconds. And if I change this value, first I can see that the value changes here. And also I can see that the, uh, the cycle time goes down by a lot because the message is sent more often because it is sent additionally on any variable change. Same here when I click. Here's my first soft key, and there's my second one. So I, I can I can check how how fast I can click, and it will show me the um, shorter cycle time. And on the other side, I have prepared three messages here, all with one, two, three for uh, the test one variable. So I'm sending uh, twelve hex. It will show me, and I'm putting it to max and to min again, and you see it works flawlessly. Sometimes you have to um, connect a device to the PCAN dongle so everything will work. Right now I don't have anything connected, no uh, terminal resistor, no device, nothing, but this varies. I don't know how exactly this works. Basically, of course, the, uh, the P client needs to catch uh, or take a hold of the PCAN dongle and Obviously, sometimes this doesn't uh, work perfectly right away, but if you close and start uh, a couple of times, um, in the end it will work. The bus heavy warning you can ignore. Of course, the bus is not correct because nothing is connected, but still everything works here because, of course, there's no actual CAN connection here. It's all um, only inside the PC. But this way you can really nicely see how do the CAN messages behave even without um, having an Opus device just on the PC, or of course, um, yeah, well, if you if you're on uh, if you have the uh, uh, the device running, you can just connect to the to the real CAN bus. You don't need to go this way. Plus, I think just let me check this. I think if I set the peak line to run uh, to run on the panel, I cannot use can hardware, it doesn't make sense. Okay, so now we know everything about peak line, variable and can simulation. I hope uh, it was helpful and I see you in the next video.